In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And your spirit. It has been a long few days, and I hope a very profitable and growth-enhancing few days. Of course, we need to remember the Feast of Easter didn't finish yesterday, it continues throughout this week. We also have a number of intentions we're asked to remember in our prayers. Now, the first one, Kia Ashcroft. Tiratiri, who died last on Good Friday and has left three young children to pray for her and her family. Alinda Songkuen, um, Katrina Pagado, and Rodney Fluitt. If we could remember all these and their families in our prayers, it would be very good. Now, we acknowledge we do fail. We ask for God's forgiveness and healing. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We praise God by praying the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us now pray. O oh God, who give constant increase to your church by new offspring, grant that your servants may hold fast in their lives to the sacrament they have received in faith. This prayer we make through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading, a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed the crowd in a loud voice. Men of Israel, listen to what I'm going to say. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commanded to you by God by the miracles and portents and signs that God worked through him when he was among you, as you all know. This man, who was put into your power by the deliberate intention and foreknowledge of God, you took and had crucified by men outside the law. 
you killed him, but God raised him to life, freeing him from the pangs of Hades, for it was impossible for him to be held in its power, since, as David says of him, I saw the Lord before me always, for with him at my right hand nothing can shake me. So my heart was glad, and my tongue cried out with joy. My body too will rest in the hope that you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor allow your Holy One to experience corruption. You have made known the way of life to me. You will fill me with gladness through your presence. Brothers, no one can deny that the patriarch David himself is dead and buried. His tomb is still with us. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn him an oath to make one of his descendants succeed him on the throne, what he foresaw and spoke about was the resurrection of the Christ. He is the one who was not abandoned to Hades and whose body did not experience corruption. God raised this man Jesus to life and all of us are witness to that. Now raised to the heights of God's right hand, he has received from the Father the Holy Spirit who has promised and what you see and hear is the outpouring of that Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response, keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God. Preserve me, God, I take refuge in you. I say to the Lord, you are my God. O Lord, it is you who are my portion and cup. It is you yourself who are my prize. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel, who even at night directs my heart. I keep the Lord ever in my sight, since he is at my right hand, I shall stand firm. And so my heart rejoices, my soul is glad, even my body shall rest in safety, for you will not leave my soul among the dead, nor let your beloved know decay. You will show me the path of life, the fullness of joy in your presence, at your right hand, happiness forever. Let's now stand to hear the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Filled with awe and great joy, the women came quickly away from the tomb and ran to tell the disciples. And there coming to meet them was Jesus. Greetings, he said. And the women came up to him and, falling down before him, clasped his feet. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. They will see me there. While they were still on their way, some of the guard went off into the city to tell the chief priests all that had happened. These held a meeting with the elders, and after some discussion, handed a considerable sum of money to the soldiers with these instructions. This is what you must say. His disciples came during the night and stole him away 
while we were asleep. And should the governor come to hear of this, we undertake to put things right with him ourselves, and to see that you do not get into trouble. The soldiers took the money and carried out their instructions, and to this day that is the story among the Jews. The Gospel of the Lord. The intensity of Holy Week and the joy of Easter Day are hard to follow up with. However, the liturgy, while recognising our mixed emotions, is also concerned to help us avoid a sense of anticlimax. During the octave of Easter, effectively every day is Easter Day. And to reinforce the message that this is a time for action, we are presented throughout the whole of the Easter season from now until Pentecost with a daily reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now today's reading goes straight to Pentecost and Peter's address to the crowd. In this he comes straight to the point, summing up the events of Christ's life and the part that they all played. And then he reminds his hearers that David, King David, had foretold everything, including the resurrection. In other words, he was inviting them to see the connections, to see that Jesus was the fulfilment of all they had been waiting for. But the whole point is, there is a job to be done. The message has to be proclaimed today, just as it was by St. Peter and the first disciples. Now we too are witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. And it is vital that today's world sees in us the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, that we recognize ourselves as instruments of the Holy Spirit, that we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. So as we begin this Easter season, maybe we could, with God's help, do a bit of reflecting on the past, our own past. We can look back over our lives and recognize the number of times life has come out of what seemed to be like death. We might remember occasions when we have looked back and been thankful for things which at first seemed a disaster when they were happening. This can be a good learning experience because it actually reminds us of the way that God often works. He works to bring good out of every situation in his own way, in his own time. Now in today's Gospel passage we learn that while Jesus had many devoted followers, he also had very determined enemies. The religious establishment date hated Jesus so much, they rigged his trial. And after his death, guards were bribed to give an alternate history. The chief priests saw Jesus as a threat to their own power. And they were shocked that his death did not end the story. The people had listened to his condemnations of abuses of power, such as payments to religious leaders for elaborate purification rituals, which were a lucrative source of income. Jesus said the kingdom was available to everyone and based on love and service and not on power. You know, throughout the history of the church, it's often been found that people who dedicate their lives to the service of others in the name of Christ so often meet with opposition. What we learn from them is that we never, should never cease from being loving witnesses to the truth, even when it is difficult, even when the cost might be high. These people remind us there are ideas and values that are worth defending, no matter what the cost. So we pray that the Holy Spirit give us the courage and the commitment to work towards constructing a society built on love, justice and peace for everyone. What this means is that other people will discover in us a testimony to Christ. It means that others will rely on our prayers and hopefully follow our example. Hopefully we are supported by each other. But let's remember, Christianity will always be judged by what people see in Christians. They'll be, ju they'll be judged by that, what they see in our commitment to live as disciples of Christ. So we believe Easter when we live Easter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In the hope of Easter and in the light of our baptismal faith, we pray to the Father who loves us. For the pilgrim people of God, that they may journey in faith, in hope and in love, towards the glory of the resurrection. Lord, hear us. For our world, that it may soon experience the peace of the risen Christ. Lord, hear us. For the sick and dying, that through their weakness they may experience the power of their risen Saviour. Lord, hear us. For this parish community, that we may continually grow in faith, in caring and in service. Lord, hear us. That our dead may share in the full glory of the risen Jesus. Lord, hear us. Father, in prayer we place our needs before you, increase our faith, and make us ever more aware of your loving presence. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. And now let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. The Lord is the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory we sing for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept graciously, O Lord, we pray, the offerings of your peoples, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray the preface of Easter, and Eucharistic prayer number two. The Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Andrew and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We pray the prayer of spiritual communion for those unable to be with us this morning. 
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Today you are to take the body of our Lord Jesus Christ to our brothers and sisters who are unable to be with us. We ask you to give to them our greetings and our love. Read the scriptures to them, pray with them, and minister to them this most precious sacrament. Thanks, Pastor. Let us now pray. May the grace of this Paschal Sacrament abound in our minds, we pray, O Lord, and make those you have set on the way of eternal salvation worthy of your gifts. This prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and glorify God in your daily lives. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Amen.